Hey folks, who doesn't enjoy palette swaps? Whether they're official characters, fan creations, or the result of a bizarre glitch, there's something fun about seeing essentially a recolored clone of a popular character, doubly so when they go on to develop their own story, following, and legacy. The Sonic fan community, perhaps more so than any other fandom, is fond of taking unofficial palette swap characters and making them cult heroes. That's what happened with Ashura, the green palette glitch of Sonic from Sonic 2. And, to a lesser extent, that's also what happened with the topic of today's video. Someone who feels a little bit like Ashura's little brother, Wechnia, the Echidna. Just for a bit of context, back in the internet's early Wild West days, I was utterly fascinated by reading about weird, wacky discoveries made in Sonic games that people posted about online. For some reason, of all the early discoveries and secrets, the idea of being able to play as glitched palette swaps like Ashura and Wechnia got me the most excited. Why? Well, there's something cool about pulling off a fun glitch, no doubt, but also because of the mythology that developed around this dynamic duo. This video has been a long time coming, and I'm going to run you through who or what Wechnia is, how to pull off the glitch yourself, where the name came from, and how Wechnia's influence on the Sonic series is still being felt somehow. I really enjoy doing these Sonic character profiles, and this is my 18th. Wow. Check out the playlist for more, and please let me know who you want me to cover next. Maybe a Chaotix member, someone more modern, someone from the comics, etc. There's so many possibilities. Anyway, without further ado, let's talk Wechnia. The story of Wechnia starts with Knuckles Chaotix. Knuckles Chaotix released in 1995 for Sega's 32X hardware add-on for the Mega Drive, and has only ever been re-released briefly once. Coupling that fact with the low 32X sales numbers means that Chaotix is one of the more obscure Sonic games out there. Certainly, before the age of easy <coughs> emulation, Knuckles Chaotix was an exotic mystery to a lot of Sonic fans. It looked awesome in magazines, but hadn't really been played by that many people. I certainly didn't know anyone that owned it, so I could only look on admiringly as characters from this mysterious game appeared in Sonic the Comic. Knuckles Chaotix is unique. It differs from other classic Sonic games in a few major ways. The main difference is you play as two characters at once, connected by an elastic band of ring energy that can be used to reach tricky spots and can fire off the player at ultra high speed, because you can have one of the characters hold and then release to give an immense burst of momentum. This results in Chaotix's levels being huge, just as sprawling vertically as horizontally to accommodate for this ultra fast style of gameplay. The game featured five zones with multiple acts that were played in a random order, most of them being more maze-like in structure than their other 2D Sonic counterparts. Now, this isn't a full review of Knuckles Chaotix, but everyone seems to have an opinion on this game, so I'll very quickly share my thoughts. First of all, I think the music is absolutely brilliant, and that's not up for debate. I also really like the amount of characters the game has and think that the entire Chaotix all have cool designs. I'm also very fond of the ultra colorful graphics that try to show what the 32X was capable of. And the gameplay is fun to an extent. I do find the game to be a little chaotic, pun intended, but it's the lacking level design that really results in most of the zones being a lot less memorable than other Sonic classics by quite a large margin. In reality, I replay it less than Sonic 1 through Sonic & Knuckles, but I do still enjoy it, don't get me wrong. I like the speed that the game's elastic band mechanic offers, it's a cool idea. Honestly, I wish it was included in Sonic Origins so that more fans had the chance to play it. It's a contentious game, so let me know your Knuckles Chaotix hot takes in the comments. Now, what we now know about the history of Knuckles Chaotix is that it evolved out of an earlier prototype called Sonic Crackers. ROMs of Crackers are available online. When you boot them up, you'll see that Crackers shared the elastic band powering concept. 
but it styled Sonic and Tails instead of Knuckles. Crackers was originally designed for the vanilla Mega Drive, but the game morphed into a 32X project, and Sonic and Tails at some point were dropped in favour of Knuckles and a cohort of brand new playable characters, a whopping seven in total, each with their own unique abilities. Alongside Knuckles, you have Team Chaotix, consisting of Might of the Armadillo of the old Sega Sonic the Hedgehog arcade game, Espio the Chameleon, Charmy B, and Vector the Crocodile. There's also the lumbering robots Heavy and Bomb 2, of course, who slow the player down. And that's it, right? That's all. Well, not quite. There is this other character, if I can even call them that. A strange white echidna who looks just like Knuckles called Wetchnir, who's gone on to develop a bit of a cult following amongst fans. Wetchnir is, of course, not an official character, but a bizarre palette glitch, just like good old Ashura the Hedgehog. This is how to play as Wetchnir. So first you're gonna to want to go to the main menu, click on options and then color test. What you're gonna to want to do is alter the first six numbers on the left hand side to read 06, OB, 11, and 04, 00, 04. After doing so, press the start button and you'll be taken back to the main menu. Now you'll have the stage select option available. You'll be able to select your player character in the stage select menu. Scroll through the options and you'll notice a strange entry. Not a name, but a list of 10 stars. If you select to play as the 10 starred character, you'll get your first glimpse of Wetchnir, who looks just like Knuckles with white gray fur, red eyes and gloves and a very dark snout. As you play, what should become evident is that Wetchnir doesn't just have a weird palette, but everything about him is a little odd. When he runs, it looks like he's headbanging. Sometimes his body disappears, leaving just an arm behind. And curiously, Wetchnir also possesses some animations that Knuckles doesn't have. Watch out though, because Wetchnir causes a guaranteed game crash under certain circumstances, like if you lean on the edge of a platform. I have heard that in the final version of the game, the game will sometimes crash as soon as Wetchnir touches the ground, but that wasn't the case for me. I was able to play for quite a while as Wetchnir, but if you do get that initial game-breaking glitch, you can always try a ROM from an earlier prototype version of the game, where the Wetchnir glitch is also present. All of the prototype versions of the game that we're currently aware of have the stage select menu option enabled by default, which is quite handy. So that's the Wetchnir glitch. But why does it even happen? Well, that's an interesting question. I mentioned Sonic Crackers earlier, and it appears that Sonic and Tails were originally going to be included as playable characters in an early version of Knuckles Chaotix, but were eventually removed. It's worth noting that Sonic and Tails do make an appearance at the very end of the good ending in the final version of the game, appearing on the tornado behind the Chaotix crew, but they're not playable, and Sonic has tan legs, which just looks wrong. So when the player accesses the stage select menu and selects a character to play as, Might of the Armadillo actually occupies the first character slot and Wetchnir, or the 10 stars, is the second. The current prevailing theory is that Mighty was added to the game as a direct replacement for Sonic during the development process. The similarities between Sonic and Mighty's sprite work, for example, is pretty evident. Tails, on the other hand, was simply removed and not replaced with anyone. Tails-related sprites have been data mined from various different versions of Knuckles Chaotix ROMs as evidence of this, but Wetchnir himself is in fact a remnant of Tails' inclusion and deletion. If you play the version 1207 prototype ROM, the link to Tails becomes even clearer. The good folks over at the cutting room floor have been able to slightly tinker with the 1207 prototype's code to restore much more of Tails. In this version, you'll be able to mash the jump button to make Wetchnir levitate and float in the air. The floating, of course, is just like Tails' power of flight. You'll also notice that Wetchnir is golden, and his animation is a little smoother than in the final version of the game, though crashing is still a big issue. All versions of the game contain a character color palette corresponding to Tails, which is the palette coloring Wetchnir here. 
in the final version of the game, Wechnia's palette pointer points to Mighty's palette, which explains Wechnia's black, grey, red and yellow colour scheme. The fact that Wechnia is a remnant of a deleted character, aka Tails, also explains why the game is prone to crashing under certain circumstances. When you're leaning on a ledge, for example, the game has tried to load sprites for animations that don't exist for Wechnia. In short, Wechnia ended up being a weird admixture of three different characters. He's based off of Tails, uses Knuckles' sprite sheet, and uses Mighty's palette, Mighty's wall jump ability, and if you happen to jump in a special stage, he uses Mighty's assets there too. So that's the Wechnia glitch. But let's get a little more esoteric here. Wechnia isn't an officially assigned name. So you might be wondering, who gave him that name? And who made this discovery in the first place? How did Wechnia become so well-known and relatively popular that fans have made Wechnia fan art and Wechnia mods and other cool Wechnia stuff the past couple of decades? Well, just like Ashura before him, Wechnia's history is traceable thanks to the power of the World Wide Web. If you recall, Ashura was identified and named by artist Charles Mugg in the 1990s. Wechnia isn't quite that old, but with the power of Google, we can also track down the man who gave Wechnia his rather unoriginal name. That man was Pachuca, the former webmaster of the website Sonic Cult. In a write-up about Knuckles Chaotic's debug mode from 2004, Pachika compiled some screenshots originally uploaded by a dude named Rahan Akero to his own website who may well have been responsible for discovering the glitch or at least making the internet aware of it. The Wayback Machine has a snapshot of Rahan's GeoCity site from 2001. Wow, that sentence made me nostalgic. Raham explains that after eight hours of playing around, he stumbled upon the stage select menu and grabbed a camcorder to get some footage. If you look closely, you might see Rahan mention a removed glitch character. We'll probably never know, but it'd be fascinating to know whether in 2001, Rahan was the first guy outside of Sega to see the Wechnia glitch or not. Anyway, in the Sonic Cult write-up, Pachuca dubs the glitch character Wechnia a portmanteau of white and echidna. Not amazingly original, I know, but the name has stuck. Here, for example, is the Knuckles Chaotix page on Sonic Cult. There's Wechnia front and center with a tail shadow. Ah, very clever. I see what you did there. This might well be the first piece of Wechnia fan art out there. I wasn't able to find anything older. I think it's pretty cool. I've mentioned Sonic Cult in other videos. The site was a bit of a hub for enthusiastic Sonic fans and hackers and was instrumental in making me and the wider fanbase aware of really obscure characters like Honey the Cat, for example. Sonic Cult might well be a long distant memory to some, and for younger fans, it might be something you've never heard of before. But it was one of the internet's most important Sonic sites when it came to making intriguing discoveries by hacking the old games. At the height of its power, Sonic Cult was known for its edgy style of humor and dramatic feuds with other Sonic sites. But all that aside, Sonic Cult deserves a hearty salute for helping to discover and popularize the likes of Honey and Wechnia. If you want to check the site out now, you can find intact echoes of it on the Wayback Machine. The unfortunate difference between Wechnia and Ashura is that Wechnia's discovery wasn't accompanied by any fan headcanon theories about Wechnia's identity from its discoverer. That's a shame, but instead I have vague, half-forgotten memories of reading long-deleted forum posts theorizing about Wechnia's identity, with some fan ideas aligning with my own. I liked to try to fill in the blanks myself, too. The Fleetway comic books always presented the Special Zone, home of the Chaotix, as a weird place akin to the realm seen in Steve Ditko's Doctor Strange. As such, I always thought of Wechnia as an odd, ultra-powerful mirror version of Knuckles from another dimension linked to the Special Zone. Not necessarily evil, but just completely out of place in the company of Knuckles and Co. Because of his ultra-glitchy nature, 
I thought of him to be a dimension hopper, kind of like America Chavez in that Doctor Strange movie, actually, with one foot in Knuckles' dimension and one foot in his own. What do you think? Please do share with me your headcanon theories too. Maybe the fact that Wechner can crash the game makes him a bit of a progenitor of the whole Sonic creepypasta craze. Hmm. Shortly after Wechner's discovery on Sonic Cult, news spread to other Sonic sites. In April 2004, Secrets of Sonic Team, another great Sonic side at the time, wrote up a piece about the discovery, dubbing the white echidna Wechina. We China. We China. Hmm. Doesn't quite roll off the tongue the same way, does it? A few variants of the spelling exist, but I assure you it's Wechnia. My research showed that a Wechidna does exist, but he's a more recent creepypasta style fan creation, so don't get the two mixed up. So Ashura had a pretty deep impact on the Sonic fan community and inspired both Scourge and Surge. One final question remains then. What impact, if any, has Wechnia had? Well, interestingly, the Archie, IDW, and Fleetway comic book series have all boasted characters that fans have sometimes assumed were inspired by Wechnia. First, there's Dr. Zachary from Fleetway's Sonic the Comic. I've covered him in more detail before, but the short version of his story is that he's an evil, old, white-furred echidna and a nemesis of Knuckles. Obviously, the similarity between Dr. Zachary and Wechnia seems to come down solely to their colour. But honestly, I don't think Zachary is at all influenced by Wechnia, because I imagine the glitch would have been unknown to Fleetway's writers and artists. I've never heard mention of Wechnia as a distinct influence. Moving on, the Archie comics also featured a villainous white-furred albino echidna called Dr. Finitavis. What is it with these echidna doctors? Finitavis debuted before the discovery of the Wechnia glitch as a normal echidna, but then reappeared in 2007 with his new white colour scheme, leading fans to wonder about a Wechnia inspiration. As far as I know, a link between the two is unconfirmed, but it is possible. Now, the IDW comics also have an evil doctor named Dr. Starline. He's something of a protege of Dr. Eggman's. Starline is a little different to the others because he's a platypus rather than echidna. Starline's colour scheme with his grey-white fur, dark beak and red eyes is reminiscent of Wechnia. But in the case of Starline, any conjecture has been confirmed by writer Ian Flynn, who's directly cited Wechnia as an inspiration for Dr. Starline. Just as Surge was something of a tribute to Ashura, so is Starline a tribute to Wechnia, one of a trio of characters inspired by relatively famous Sonic glitches. Think back to Knuckles' Chaotix. Wechnia's name isn't there, remember? Instead, there's a line of stars. Get it? Starline? The connection between Starline and Wechnia could have been even stronger, evidenced when you take a snoop at some Starline concept art. In one design, Starline has longer, echidna-style dreadlocks and coloured eyes that would have presumably been red, making him look even more like Wechnia. Here's another iteration of an early Starline design, with a Frankenstein's monster look. This is quite clever, considering Wechnia is a bit of a Frankenstein's monster himself, a hybrid made by stitching together Tails, Knuckles and Mighty. I like it, but I'm fond of Starline's final design too. The tribute to Wechnia is subtle and allows Starline to have his own distinct personality. But I do think it's pretty awesome to see unofficial fan championed characters like Wechnia influence official Sonic media. Talking of official Sonic media, there is one more fun Wechnia fact to mention. If you play through as Knuckles and Knuckles in Sonic Mania, there's a very sneaky, blink and you'll miss it reference to Wechnia during the game's ending. I'll show you it and see if you can spot it. Okay, let me explain. An alarm starts sounding, turning the screen red. Take a look at the palette of the second Knuckles here. It's different, with deep red eyes and lighter fur. Definitely a Wechnia reference. Along with that, and just like Ashura, Wechnia has maintained cult popularity among Sonic fans appearing in plenty of cool fan art and plenty of mods too. 
I've seen Wetchnia mods for Sonic 3 Angel Island Revisited, Friday Night Funkin', and strangely, Sonic R. But oddly, I've not seen a Sonic Robo Blast 2 Wetchnia, so if there's any modders out there, this is an assignment for you. It really goes to show you just how passionate Sonic fans are, keeping the flame of so many characters alive, even when they're not official. Before we finish, let me tell you a final secret. The truth is, Knuckles Chaotix is a bit of a buggy game, and Wechnir isn't the only character with a weird palette glitch issue. It's possible to cause a multitude of different palette glitches by playing as Wechnir and getting a bunch of power-ups, including the character swap item. I've not been able to pull this off, but I've seen evidence of it on Reddit, so there you go. More simply, it's also possible to cause characters' palettes to glitch out by slowly approaching the start of a boss area. Not all of the palette swaps achievable by following this method look very aesthetically pleasing, but some, like Mighty here, work quite well. There's so many glitch characters up for grabs here, who wants to name one? And that is just about everything there is to say about Wechnia, the glitchy echidna. Thank you for joining me. This one was a lot of fun to put together. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.